Hello everyone, this is Senior Biotech Analyst John Vandermosten. Welcome to our channel that educates the life sciences investor on exciting advancements in drugs, biologics, and devices. For more content and news like this, subscribe to our channel below and like or share with others. Welcome everyone today to our discussion with the CEO of Reviva Pharmaceuticals, Dr. Laxbot. Thank you for being here today. Uh, he is leading a, 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 an R&D stage company that's developing berloroxazine, an atypical antipsychotic for the treatment of schizophrenia. Uh, the company recently started its phase three clinical trial for this drug and uh, is doing, is, uh, just started dosing patients uh, just a month ago. So schizophrenia affects almost 3 million people in the United States and about 24 million people around the globe. And approved medications for the population are insufficient because they don't have strong enough efficacy or they have unpleasant side effects which lead to patients stopping taking the drug. Uh, so the unmet need is open the door for new drugs like berloroxazine. And um, we're going to talk about that today with Dr. Bott. So um, Dr. Bott, could you introduce yourself to us? Give us a little about, about your background, and then we'll uh, jump into to some questions about what you're working on. Thank you for having me here, John. You're so, welcome. I'm the founder and CEO of Reviva Pharmaceuticals. Uh, my background is I'm a uh, translational research scientist uh, uh, turned entrepreneur. I've been in the industry for uh, over 20 years. I received my doctorate degree in medicinal chemistry prior to starting my uh, uh, career in uh, pharma industry. I did four years postdoctoral research. Over the last 20 years, I worked uh, on various uh, therapeutic areas. Uh, uh, my primary focus has been in the CNS and cardiometabolic area. Okay. I contributed to multiple uh, investigational new drug that entered clinical stages, and then uh, one FDA approved drug currently in the global market. At Reviva, our focus is to develop new therapies for uh, uh, primarily focused on CNS and cardiometabolic uh, diseases. We address unmet need, and then our uh, discovery approach has been focused on using uh, genomics driven approach and then proprietary chemistries. Okay. Well, yeah. you mentioned, now you mentioned the unmet need, and I think that's probably the most important factor here. Um, what is the unmet need right now in schizophrenia and some of the other um, areas where you're working? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, despite, uh, ha uh, you know, there are around 10 drugs actively used globally for treating uh, schizophrenia. So, yeah, 10 right out, now. Out yeah. of that, around uh, six drugs are blockbuster drugs. Each one of mm -hmm. them have over, uh, has over, uh, you know, uh, a billion uh, dollar sales annually. Well, I, th I think we'd probably recognize some of those names, wouldn't it we? Like, a, you know, uh, Abilify, generic mm -hmm. name, Eripiprazole, Zyprexa is another mm -hmm. drug. Mm -hmm. So uh, despite uh, generic status, uh, both uh, Olanzapine uh, and uh, Eripiprazole have over three, uh, close to two to three billion dollar market share yeah, currently. Yeah, pretty big opportunity but, there. But uh, still, uh, treatment is, uh, you know, suboptimal. So mm -hmm. why suboptimal? If you look at the statistics, around uh, 30 to 50 percent patients discontinue in four to six weeks of treatment with the blockbuster antipsychotics I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then over a long term treatment, up to 70, uh, 70 to 75 percent patient discontinue medication. So remember, the schizophrenia is not like a, uh, you know, antibacterial uh, treatment or antiviral treatment. Treatment requires anywhere around uh, several years to lifelong treatment. Sure. So Having a good efficacy and then a tolerability safety profile is very critical for patients to adhere to the treatment. Sure. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that um, that patients feel the negative side effects before they get the benefit of the drug. Isn't that right? Isn't that generally correct? So, you know, it is uh, often it is believed that it is only the side effect. But if you look at it, it's not only the side effect. It is the suboptimal efficacy mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. contribute to discontinuation of treatment. Okay. Schizophrenia is not a single disease like cancer. Rather, it is a cluster of at least four major symptoms, mm -hmm. positive symptoms, negative symptoms, and uh, uh, mood symptoms and cognitive mm -hmm. dysfunction. Mm -hmm. These are the four major uh, components or uh, uh, comorbidities associated with schizophrenia. Uh, what we know with the uh, approved treatments in about, uh, uh, you know, four to six weeks of treatment, by and large patients get stabilized, but that does not mean that they are out of symptoms. But the residual symptoms, what we call negative symptoms, mood and cognitive, it takes longer time to 
uh, you know, address. Mm -hmm. So currently approved treatments are not really optimal to address those residual symptoms. That's also the re one of the reasons why uh, patients discontinue treatment. Of course, side effects are another uh, uh, you know, uh, reason why patients discontinue. Overall, if we can come up with a new treatment that can be uh, you know, uh, to a great extent efficacious in addressing uh, all major comorbidities yet uh, uh, having a better safety profile mm -hmm. could uh, provide a you know, uh, potential improved treatment over the currently available blockbuster so, treatment. So how does, how does berlaroxazine actually improve on those, those two axes? Yeah. The, you know, the, the efficacy and, and the side effects side. In the berlaroxazine, uh, often drug discovery is a very uh, complex process. Often we consider it just a uh, receptor profile will lead to better drug. There are various components we need to address, how much it absorbs, how much it gets into the brain, how it cleaves in the body. These are all contributes to uh, not only overall uh, efficacy or we call it as a therapeutic index uh, mm -hmm. in also side effects. So brilleroxazine, in, uh, we have addressed various these issues and then we believe this is a, an optimal drug to treat schizophrenia. Uh, if you look at the uh, mechanism of or a pathobiology of schizophrenia, at least based on uh, you know, approved drugs to date, it is primarily uh, caused by dysfunctional uh, dopamine and serotonin uh, signaling or uh, mm -hmm. uh, receptors in the uh, brain. So dysfunctional dopamine serotonin signaling uh, may also cause to at various degrees dysfunctional other neurochemicals such as uh, you know, glutamate, GABA, nicotinic receptors. Mm -hmm. So brilleroxazine targets uh, serotonin, key uh, serotonin and dopamine receptors implicated in all four major comorbidities uh, associated with schizophrenia, positive symptoms, negative symptoms, mood and cognition. And then another interesting feature, uh, uh, pharmacological features associated with schizo uh, our drug, brilleroxazine is uh, to a great extent with approved antipsychotics, we know which receptors contributing to uh, various side effects uh, reported with uh, approved antipsychotics. Our drug, brilleroxazine, either has a very weak activity for those off targets mm -hmm. or no activity compared so, to primary So that's target. why you have the, the less that's side the effects. That's the key differentiation yeah. uh, with respect to having better side, uh, side effect and tolerability, tolerability profile compared to other approved blockbuster treatment currently now, available. Now, one last thing for this segment before we move on, but it, it seems like because brilleroxazine is, is targeting the correct receptors and avoiding the incorrect receptors, it might have broader application than just schizophrenia, right? That's true because, see, you know, not all antipsychotics are used for, uh, you know, uh, more than one indication. Some uh, few, only handful of antipsychotics are used for additional indications beyond schizophrenia. Like the out of uh, six blockbuster drugs currently in the market, only uh, two to three drugs are widely used for beyond schizophrenia for bipolar and major depressive disorder. Only one drug is uh, approved for, that is Abilify, approved for besides schizophrenia, bipolar treat treatment of bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, and ADHD as well. In the phase two study, we compared our drug with Abilify, uh, 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 Aripiprazole, Based on the data in hand, we believe our drug has better profile, superior efficacy, and a safety profile, including a compliance profile compared to aripiprazole. In fact, the compliance profile in the phase two study, we have seen for the therapeutic dose, what we intend to market, only 12 to 14% dropout. 12 to 14% dropout compared to other blockbuster drugs in the similar trial, 30 to 50 percent. It's so a remarkable, less than half. Yeah. remarkable, less than uh, half. Uh, you know, uh, adherence yeah. uh, uh, profile. So that, I mean, that that seems to really address one of the biggest problems, which is discontinuation, because you're having that. Because that lower discontinuation, right? it is not only uh, you know uh, management issue; it's a huge pharmacoeconomic issue. When patients discontinue medication after a couple of weeks, they may end up in acute setup acute setup in the hospital, treatment can mm. be very, very expensive. Sure. So it is a, 
you know, having adherence to the treatment, it not, not only helps patients, but also I, I'm saves, sure- Saves the healthcare system money correct, too, which, is a, which yeah. is a strong argument. Payers would love to have that kind of profile uh, exactly. for an antipsychotic drug. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Bond. Um, you know, we had a great conversation right now about baroroxazine and Revivo Pharmaceuticals. Uh, we'll be back more with, uh, with our guest and, uh, in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. To hear more, follow us on Twitter at VanJohn10 and Instagram and our channel, Unboxing Biotech.